What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of BOP Black on Podcast. This is your boy AD with our, my co host Leo. We're going OG format back to original. Um, let's talk about the Houston Texans training camp. The first of all, guys, we haven't had an episode in a while. We've been going through, you know, we took a little break and everything like that, but we're back with you. We're about to bring this heat training camp. It started with the Houston Texans. So let's talk about it. Um, we were both there today. Um, got live look at all our first round picks. Um, you know, all the players, the incoming new Davis Mills. We got a look, a good look at everybody um, during this training camp um, today, which was Saturday. So, you know, we're just going to talk about it. You know, Leo, what was your thoughts on, you know, the training camp today and the players and everything like that? It was my first training camp ever, man. And it was a, it was a good one to go to because, like, you know, we unveiled the, the new red helmets. First of all, they look really nice. Fire red, man. Candy, candy coated red. Yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty dope, man. Uh, but yeah, man, I think, man, first of all, like the sheer just like looking at the sheer size of a NFL athlete was fuck was insane to me. Cause I, I I've been to college games and stuff before, but like, and I've obviously been to NFL games, but to be that close and to see like, man, like this is what you know what I'm saying, a, a offensive lineman looks an NFL offensive lineman looks like, you know. Mm -hmm. Very crazy. Um, but yeah, man. I, all in all, I thought it was a good, pro good practice, and uh, you know, we are gonna get into it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, some guys that I really like, you know, thought were were pretty cool to see was man. Uh, first of all, just Damian Pierce. You know, there was a lot of talk about you know Brees Hall, and although like I guess we all know Brees Hall is more explosive, a more decorated college athlete. I think Pierce, man, really showed a lot of burst. Um, and I think, man, and, and also Marlon Mack, man, I think, uh, you know, he, he looked good, too. I don't, I don't remember how many reps he got, like, an actual, like, you know, the, the real, you know, scrimmaging. But, like, in the drills, man, he looked, he looked, I mean, like, he had a little burst, too. So, man, uh, mm -hmm. I was excited to see that. Obviously, Mills, you know, um, you know, I think, man, Mills, you know, had a really strong stature and build to him, you know, and, uh you know, he when he wanted to fire the ball and it looked like he was getting some good velocity on his throws, man. You know, mm -hmm. so what did you think, man? For me, this um was my first training camp as well. This was very, very um organized, very, very well run by Lovey Smith. Um, everything was to the penny, to the dot. Um, no second over. I mean, as soon as eight o'clock hit, they started practice. As um, soon as 9.30 hit practice was over, that was, to me, that was one of the most efficient practices as far as, like, time, time, time-wise and everything like that. Um, for me, player-wise and watching the practice, the, the group that intrigued me the most was a receiver position because going in, I, I wanted to look at what, we, what were we going to look like without John Mitchie. We, we all wanted to see John Mitchie. News came out with John Mechie, prayers up to John Mechie um, with a, a kind of a curable form of leukemia, cancer, going to be pretty much going to be out for the season. Um, so with him being out, it's just um, trying to see what can be his replacement, who can fill that role. Um, and that, would, that intrigued me with Davion Davis and Johnny Johnson. The undrafted rookie out of Oregon, Davion Davis. He's the second year player out of Sam Houston State, who had an opportunity last year, played pretty well um, in the limited snaps he got, but got hurt. Um, so he's, you know, to me, he he's somebody that to, that shined in that receiver position. I know you talked about the running backs. I was focused on the receivers, even the tight end position. You know, I looked at that and seeing, you know, with the news coming down yesterday and today, that Anthony Alclair is probably going to miss most of the season, you know, with, with a knee injury. And they're already working out other tight ends. But the undra and here we go again, another undrafted gym, Seth Green out of University of Houston, really made some some big time plays. And he they relied on him a lot, especially on the second unit as the, the um, second unit tight end. He kind of stepped up and he kind of, you know, played a pivotal role as far as like taking over that spot. 
And going with, you know, we're talking about offense so much, but going with Davis Mills, Davis Mills showed real command. Um, Davis Mills showed that he is in control of this offense and control of this team. Mm -hmm. Him and Pep really work well together. And I like the fact that Davis Mills took a majority of all the reps. Yeah. Kyle Allen and Kevin Hogan, you know, Jeff Driscoll, they got the leftovers. Um, but majority of the practice from beginning to end, even in the reps, even in the not in not the seven on seven or the eleven on eleven, but even in the drills, Davis Mills got most of the drill reps as well. Mm -hmm. So that to me, that that shows the confidence and that solidifies him as the guy. Um, you know, so, but I do like, I did like his confidence, his anticipation, his willingness to check the ball down and willingness to, to take it, pull the ball down and run. If it's not there, it shows me that he's going through his progressions, um, read, you know, every going out through all three or four of his progressions and he's, you know, taking what's there. Um, but other than that, it was an all around good practice. Um, good training camp day. It wasn't, you know. The players, they were all, you know, everybody was hype, used happy faces. Nobody was, demeanor was down or anything. You know, thank God nobody got hurt today, you know, in this practice. But, um, I, you know, it was a positive sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, man, I think, uh, like you were saying, Seth Green, um, he was another guy who I, I had, we had talked about, I didn't really realize what number he wore. But man, I mean, he's another guy that, like, you know, six foot four, two forty. He looked damn near like two fifty five, two sixty. Mm -hmm. He looked very big. Um, yeah. In between he's, him, huh? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was just as big as Pharaoh and yeah. and all the other tight ends on there. You know, he was bigger than Brevin. And yeah. you know, Brevin. You know, Brevin is on the smaller side, but he was bigger than Brevin, and you know. He fits the bill of what they were looking at in tight end, that big 6'4", 6'5", 240, 250, or 260 type of um, tight end, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, um, yeah, yeah, so between that and, um, and you know, the receivers, uh, yeah, you know, with Mechie going down, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think Johnson made a really crazy diving catch at one point that the whole crowd, you know, wooed mm -hmm. and odd over. Davis was solid, um, you know, um, yeah, um, you know, I can't lie, man, um, I really looking at Brevin Jordan, bro, between Brevin Jordan and, um, you know, and these two tight end sets, they, they really used him kind of, they, they were starting him out wide and motion him in, you know what I'm saying, we seeing a lot of like single back, like two tight end sets, I really think that with the, um, um, uh, you know, the, the illness, you know, of Mechie, I think Brevin Jordan will have ample opportunity to really, really, you know, step up and, and be, you know, and get major targets this year. And I feel like, you know, I see a lot of people are very excited about him. I'm kind of really, um, at this point, I, I like him. But my thing is that, like, I feel like, you know, it's, it's going to turn into, like, is he, like, people are kind of, having this like Shannon Sharp type of like, you know, hoping he turns out to be yeah. and I'm, I, I'm really, really looking at it. And I think he's going to be a good player, but I just keep getting Gerald Everett type of vibes from him. And that's not mm -hmm. a bad thing at all, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I look, and then I, I, you know, I just went back and looked at his athletic scores, you know, he's not, he's not the fastest guy, you know what I mean? I think maybe we should kind of temper you know what I'm saying? The expectation that he's going to just like, just be this, like, you know, I think it's unfair to him, but obviously he could exceed my expectation that he could be, you know, obviously, you know, you know, you can't put a cap on a guy to say, you know, and yeah, but um, so I think honestly, one of the most, not surprising, but I, I, I think it was really, really cool to see them using Petrie as a deep safety. You know, yeah. I, I think a hundred percent, I know this 100% sure damn near that he played less than 50 snaps at his whole time in Baylor as a deep safety. And I think, you know, this, you know, I think everybody is like excited about that. But I also do think that um, it's, it's important that he gets reps there now, because even if he 
you know, things happen so fast up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe they things happen slower in the back end. I think mm-hmm. it's good for him to get these kind of reps in training camp before, you know, whatever happens and he has to play deep in the, in some point in the season. And I mean, just for his overall development, I thought that was great, man. And um, what yeah. else, bro? Yeah, I mean, shit, what you think about that? So for the defensive side of the ball, um, it was, like you said, it was very interesting and, and, and kind of, you know, nice to see that Petrie was used in multiple different ways. I saw him on the line. I saw him, you know, and too high. I saw him single high. I saw him just about all over the field. So it makes me, it gives me comfort that Petrie is going to play all over the field as well as Petrie is going to be a starter. <laughs> you know, the way it's looking uh-huh. is that Petrie and, you know, Jonathan Owens, you know, I know I joke with a lot of people call him Mr. Bowles, but Jonathan Owens and Petrie are your starting safeties right now. And, you know, it, it's a testament to Jalen Petrie. So the fact that he can come in and take over that spot from Terrence Brooks, a veteran, you know, MJ Stewart, a veteran, the fact that he's just playing that much better and being, you know, that athletic enough to, to do all of that is, is a positive. Um, on the defensive side, also um, looking at Rasheen Green, I think that what we talked about with Rasheen Green that, that, kind of brought it, brought it to light in the practice is that they had um, in the 11 on 11, there were times where they bumped him inside and had Addison next to him or Reeves Mabin or somebody like that mm-hmm. next to him. Um, and which, which kind of goes into what we were saying is that they're going to use um, Machine Green as a hybrid, as a DN, D tackle hybrid probably going to see him more on passing downs inside. Mm -hmm. Um, Those were things I looked at. As far as um, players, you know, I talked about Davion Davis, who had a good day, Johnny Johnson. Nico Collins um, had a few, you know, had had a okay, wasn't the best, you know, wasn't the best practice for Nico. But he did have a good, a big time play in the 11 on 11 against Derek Stingley mm-hmm. on a stop and go route that, you know, kind of, it was kind of almost like a welcome to the NFL moment for, for Derek Stingley. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I, those are things that you, those little tidbits and everything like that. Brandon Cook still looks like he can fucking go and he can, you know, he showed out as well but other than that other than that it it was a efficient practice and those players that we saw that we talking about the Seth Greens the Johnny Johnsons the Davion Davises this was a practice where those players that you consider to be bubble players you see them actually coming up and trying to make the roster and shout out to Bab you know, he's not here with us today, but shout out to Bath for bringing up Seth Green. He was one of the players when we when we had our undrafted um, free agent special. He told us to watch out for Seth Green mm-hmm. and Seth Green could be a player. He That was one of the guys that he, I got to give him his credit because he's the one that talked about him that, you know, put every, you know, put my mind on him, you know, put my eyes on him and everything like that. So, but I'm I'm excited to see when I go back next week, I'm excited to see what the progression is for these players. And, you know, even the running back position, I think one person we haven't talked about was Darius Anderson. Darius Anderson made the news with the whole thing with HPD and a a woman, um, you know, got in a little situation like that. Um, But, you know, he may be out of the clear for that. Um, But he really showed out at practice today. As far as, like, showing the burst, I know we talked about Mac and Pierce having that burst. Darius Anderson made some cuts and and made some moves, and that burst was there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think he is pushing Royce Freeman, Dare, um, the other guy we got there, I can't pronounce his last name. Starts with an O. Dare Olagombui, I think that's his last name. Um, 
He's going to – he's pushing to take that fourth running back spot along with Rex Burkhead, Mack, and Pierce. And I think that he may actually beat them out. If he's given an opportunity, he may actually beat them out the way he performed at practice today compared to Royce Freeman because Royce Freeman got his fair share of snaps as well. But it was just a difference when you saw Darius Anderson um, get that ball. You know, so those are my takeaways. you have anything else or any – future camp predictions or anything like that or man at this point like I'm gonna just say you know we I shit I don't know and you know I think that you know it's just good to see you know people getting reps everywhere you know like I think that you know it's important to understand this isn't indicative of the full season or or you know either these young players rookie careers you know because like you know, people move around a lot all the time, you know, from guard to tackle, tackle to guard, you know, corner, mm-hmm. inside, outside, you know, you know, mm-hmm. safety box, you know, you know, all that stuff. Um, one person that I would like to see more of is Booker. You know, I don't yes. know who just wasn't paying attention to him. I just, I didn't see him too much. Uh, next time Booker, I go, he I, Booker got in towards the end of practice. He got in with maybe like the third or fourth stringer. That that is a concern with me too. Is that I want to see? I do want to see more of Booker. Mm-hmm. I want to see more um, of Kenyon Green. I know he's on a pitch count, mm-hmm. um, but the limited amount that we did see Kenyon Green, Kenyon Green, can you know was a surprise to me is that he can move better than what the experts and everybody was saying about him coming out of college. Was that he was he lacked athleticism and that that was his biggest flaw was that his athleticism was subpar compared to the other offensive guards in the draft that we were all talking about, the Ickies and and, and the Zion Johnsons or whatever. Mm-hmm. Kenyon Green was, but, you know, watching the plays and watching him pull and run, he can move. And Kenyon Green is a massive human being. I know you talked about the players, seeing them in person, but Kenyon Green is a humongous mm-hmm. man. <laughs> and he... You know, it, he was just as big as Titus, just as big as Tunsil, you know, that people that you would assume were our biggest linemen. So he, to me, he, the way for him to be that big and to move like he was moving, I really want to see more of him. Hopefully the ramp up period for him will, will, will increase um, by the time we get to next week in training camp and everything like that, because we're getting closer and closer to that first preseason game. So um, those are things that I want to see more of. I just, you know, I want to see Marlon Mack more too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marlon Mack was limited. You know, all these guys that they're limited and everything like that, they're coming off of injuries. So I do want to see more of those guys um, next week. So hopefully we'll we'll get more of them. But all right, and also for everyone that asks, because everybody that we talked to asks, you know, from other fan bases, Derek Stanley looks to be moving around just mm-hmm. fine. Uh, he looks, you know, <laughs> looks he, he looks the part. Yeah, he, he looks he looks like the number three pick in the NFL draft. He's fast, he's mobile, he um, agile. All these things. There was no lingering effect. Um, that you can see or anything from Derek Stingley as far as an injury is concerned. What would you say, like, about him, like, physically, like, looking at him compared to other corners, like, that close? Cause, yeah. Like, you know. I- Derek Stingley, and I think people, because I think this is this is a difference between him and Sauce Gardner. Derek Stingley is a big cornerback. Mm-hmm. He is a big cornerback. Derek Stingley is built – Derek Stingley is is musk is like you know I, I wouldn't say beefy but he's like muscular, and Derek Stingley is extremely fast. Um, you know I think he's faster than a Sauce Gardner. Oh yeah. And then I think that he's the fact that he's a bigger corner than Sauce, and that he's faster than Sauce, makes him is the reason why he was drafted number three. Um. Mm-hmm. But seeing him in person, it's like this dude is, you know, legit 6'1", damn near 6'2", you know, corner. And, like, every corner we talk about that's great, you know, how often do you see somebody of his size and speed, you know, being one of the great corners? We look at the 
Tim Bailey's and we look at the, you know, the ones that we reference, those guys were under six feet. Those were like 5'11 corners, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken. I mean, I think right at six feet for sure. Yeah. You know? I feel but like that's nitpicking picking to say they ain't, you know? Right. Right. But just the fact that Derek Stingley is clearly 6'2, mm-hmm. you know, I, like they can say he's 6'1, the dude is 6'2, legit 6'2. He's big. He's big. And, and, you know, and the fact that he has that combination of size and speed, I just think that it's, you know, a positive and the fact that there's no lingering and the fact that nobody other than that Nico Collins play that I mentioned earlier, there was no, no one or anything that he was challenged as far as like getting beat on a route or getting beat, you know, on a play or anything like that. So I feel like, you know, Derek Stingley is going to do well. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm I'm positive. I'm very, very excited to see more of Derek Stingley. Excited to see more Petrie. You know, all of our rookies and everybody we brought in, I'm really excited to see, you know, these guys. Yeah. Um, I definitely think, like, Stingley kind of looks like he fits in that damn, like, Stephon Gilmore type of mode. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, like, 6-1. Who else, like? Shit, Gilmore. I mean, there's not that many even, corners. Uh, even even corners like Antonio Cromartie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tracy Horn. I mean, I know he's, you know, that type of guy, you know. Right, but you're talking about you're talking about those big fast corners. Like I think Cromarty, Cromarty sticks out in my mind mm-hmm. as being one of those big, as being one of those big fast corners. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I just think that. It's going to be a positive because he gives you more flexibility to do more things that you ever thought you could do. And, and another thing, too, I mean, I guess, like, at this point, we're talking about damn near, like, you know, talking about doing shit that you never done. I mean, the mm-hmm. idea that, like, Lovey Smith is going to stay in one coverage the whole game, you know, to yeah. me is, like, it's, 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 a, it's, it's kind of, I mean, at this point, it's, like, it's 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 like talking about like you know shit that happened 30 years ago like as if like it's gonna happen tomorrow <laughs> you know it's it's right. outdated uh i mean we've seen them running you know i the 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 um video i got of uh stingley was of him running like cover three you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying they was running cover three i seen you know cover one i mean they did play too high but you know mm-hmm. It was a bunch of different. They ran a bunch of different stuff. It's know? the it's the multiple coverages that Lovey has adopted on ever since the second half of the year last year, going into this year, it's it's translating. You see things translating as far as like that, and I think you have the personnel now to do such. If you want to play single high deep, you have a person that can do that in Terrence Brooks. I know he's not the best at it, but he is a guy that can play that play that efficiently. Um, if you you know you want to run man, you have man corners now. You have, you know, players that can play hella man. Derek Stingley is one of them. You know, so you have all these different options um, at the in the secondary to run multiple coverages. You also have speed at the linebacker position that um, we didn't have before with Garrett Wallow and Christian Harris. Um, Garrett Wallow did make a hell of a play in the in the seven on seven um, portion of the practice, where he broke up a pass, um, anticipation and everything. It, it was very 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 um, exciting to see, and that was something that we talked about. That Bab talked about is one of his player profiles and, and people he's excited to see in the um, upcoming season. I'm 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 assuming just based on practice, we're gonna see a lot more Garrett Wallow. Mm-hmm. We're going to see, you know, him becoming a key figure, which once again allows you to do multiple things with your defense yeah. because of Gary Wallow's speed, right, 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 and because of you know him being able to 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 work out in coverage and not be a liability. And it's like, like, always, like Christian Kirksey. And it's like mm-hmm. we always talk about with the versatility of the linebackers and uh, Lovey's scheme. It seems like. Most of the linebackers we see um, that end up performing well in this type of a scheme have, you know what I'm saying, like safety background, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, 
but one thing I will say, like, not to be negative and turn it there, is just like, you know, one area of, of, you know, that I think that, you know, the way we'll be tested this year is just continuously, like, how does the defensive line hold up, particularly, mm-hmm. like, the inside of the defensive line? Mm-hmm. And because um, you have these, like, super versatile pieces behind them that, you know, are all speed guys. And eventually, like, you know, eventually, you know, we're just going to have to man up and just hit people. So, like, you just wonder, like, how clean the defensive line can keep them just throughout the course of a game and the season. So, like, that's my only thing. But, like I say, you know, um, I think every player we have that love that Nick has drafted has a place on this team, regardless of, you know what I'm saying, with these first-round picks we get, you know what I'm saying, like, whether they get pushed down the depth chart or not, like, everybody it has a place, it seems like, you know, so – you know, I'm happy about that, man. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah. All in all, I think it was a great practice. Um, I think it was awesome. I mean, I don't. We didn't really talk about this too much, but also I think you know you talk about Pep and um, um, Pep's connection to uh, Davis. I think Pep, man, um, was really, really just focused today, man. He had like a real, real vibe about him, and it's definitely like you know not taking this for granted. And I think that, um, you know, I think, you know, I'm not saying we're going to have a record-breaking offense this year, but it's going to be very, very interesting to see his mm-hmm. development over the next two to three years, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Uh, even, think, even, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Man. No, I'm saying even the positions, the the line, um, the lineups that he had as far as like, you know, he had, he, he had a lot of star um, you know, star lineups, mm-hmm. you know, as far as like having that the receiver tight end combo in the star format. Mm-hmm. Um that to me shows, you know, something different. Mm-hmm. Um him, you know, him coming up, the concepts that he's gonna come up with is a lot different than than what we saw the last few years with Bill O'Brien and Tim Kelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did now there is a few things that are still brought back from the whole Bill O'Brien Tim Kelly thing but I think it's it's you know his in, ingenuity I'm trying to think of the word to use but I'm think I think that his cre- creativity is is kind of was put on display as far as like you know what was going on in practice today um yeah, but it, yeah. and I mean you know it's like we always say when you go back and look at his at the coaching trees you know what I'm saying? It, it, I think with him, like, you know, it's, it goes, a lot of the shit goes back to like, kind of like John Gruden, you know what I'm saying? Between Harbaugh and, John, you know, who, you know, you know, is affiliated with John Gruden. And uh, so I, I think um, also another thing too, is that it's just, what we are seeing is the bare bones and the beginnings of it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just simple, basic stuff. I'm sure they're running, you know what I'm saying? I think like, you know, the offense that we see now might not be the same offense by week 10. And then, you know, I'm saying the year after that, you know, and the year after that. And mm-hmm. so, like, you know, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying he's going to be Anthony Reed, but I, Anthony, my bad, Andy Reed, but like, shit, yeah. you know, I mean, I think he's definitely, you know, an open minded guy. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, you never know. What, what what it can turn into in the future, you know, just yeah. for the whole coaching staff. That's another thing. And I know we talked about this, like, really, really in the podcast emphasis stages was just the amount of Black coaches we had. You know, it's hard for me to believe yeah. that there's another, you know, coaching staff in the NFL that has more Black coaches than we do right now. It is, it's not. The fact that we have a – just look at the offensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. It's all but one position coach. Mm-hmm. That's not that's we have one non non black position coach. I think it's the tight ends coach and the receiver coach. What is uh, McDaniel's? Not McDaniel's. 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 Yeah. I think yeah. So two. Yeah. Two. But the running the running back mm-hmm. coach is black. The mm-hmm. offensive line coach is black. Quarterback coach. The quarterback coach is black. Mm-hmm. You know. Is 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 you know? Then you look at the defense of you know Lovey Smith, the head coach, defense coordinator, but linebackers coach is black. 
secondary coaches black. You know, like it's it's up and down. D line coach black, right? Right. D line coach is a former player. Yeah. You know. So so I mean you know it's interesting you know and I I think that's something that uh you know I like to to just say that I want people to be good at their jobs you know mm-hmm. first and foremost but. It's great to see so many black guys that are good at their job that are getting a shot here. And I mean, I hope that uh, like with this theme of the first two years of the, uh, well, yeah, first two years of the, going into the second year of the Casario, you know, mm-hmm. conundrum, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I hope to see, you know, more continuity with these guys. And even, you know, man, uh, I mean, not to turn this into a selfish thing, even if we can't be the team that, you know, sees like, you know, you know, some of these guys get promotions to to see them, you know what I'm saying, go somewhere else and, and mm-hmm. do well somewhere else to get promotion. You know, not only will that be good for just the whole black coach movement and all that shit, but just like, you know, it yeah. even is will bring good back on us because it'll give us picks. You know, obviously mm-hmm. that's selfish, but I mean it's in the rules. So yeah. and and to me it it shows that black coaches also have good football minds as well. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like Nick Casario is hands-on and I feel like he is not going to have people on the coaching staff or have people um, around the Houston Texans at this point that are not good coaches or good football minds. Yeah, yeah. Even our, you know, everybody that they, anybody that they brought back from the last regime, regime, are good football minds, mm-hmm. and I think that's what Nick Casario, because that's the reason why I feel like Nick Casario and Lovey Smith get along so well, is because they align as far as like how they think football wise, football minds, mm-hmm. the way they see the game, the knowledge of the game. I think the respect that both of them have ridiculous amount of knowledge lovey you know probably 40 years worth of knowledge in the game coaching wise and nick casario 20 plus years with the patriots knowledge wise you know so i think it's just the respect factor and i think that goes throughout the you know even the guys that they brought in the quarterback coach the running back all these different guys that they brought in in the offseason they're good football minds with a boatload of experience Mm-hmm. nobody that they brought in you know has very limited experience everybody they brought in is like heavy heavy experience even the defensive line coach he has experience because he played in the league mm-hmm. and so it's you know it's it's a lot going on but you know that was good to see the representation out there on the field yeah, yeah. it was good to see it was good to see you know how they organized it and everything and that it was you know, it was a good, it was a good practice, man. It was a good practice. It was a good experience. I challenge anybody that's a Texan fan to take advantage and get to a training camp Mm -hmm. because the experience at training camp is, is completely different. And it, it, it opens your eyes up and gives you a different perspective than what you will normally see on a TV game or what you would see on the NFL network highlight or ESPN highlight, you know, these, you know, even even local news highlight, these are things that you would want to see um, to kind of get you, give you a different perspective. So I challenge all Texan fans and, you know, everything like that to, to go out and, and see the Texans in this training camp. Yeah, man, I, I was happy I did it, man. And uh, yeah, so I guess we'll be back, you know, soon with more stuff, you know, hopefully in between now and next week. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a, a a word on the Deshaun case that, you know, I guess everybody is following closely. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, bro, that's, it is what it is, man. Um, you got anything else to say about that, that play? No, other, other than that, man, I, I just want people to be on the lookout. We are coming with some more episodes soon. We are going to start our um, series of division talk. Um, we're going to bring in um, different um, Twitter, you know, fans of different teams that we talk about or talk with on a regular. We're going to talk about these divisions during this whole training camp preseason period. 
Um, so be on the lookout for those episodes, man. We're gonna break down those eight, these eight divisions, man, and we're gonna we're gonna break them down. Even the AFC South, we're gonna we'll have some battles with those guys as well. But yeah, be on the lookout for these um upcoming episodes, man. And y'all please like, share, and subscribe. This is your boy AD. We got Leo in the building, so we coming, you know, we'll holler at y'all later, man.